So welcome everybody uh, to to our brief presentation of, of what Xander already has talked about, namely our, our database of the Leuven Trilingue, which we have uh, dubbed uh, TALET. Uh, it's an acronym, but conveniently it's also uh, the Hebrew letter uh, Dalit, and, and it's also uh, related to the Delta, of course. So the three languages are are in it, uh, seen as the the logo. Uh, the, the the acronym is, of course, in in uh, the Latin alphabet. We're going to present to you, and maybe can, Sander can share his screen in in a second, uh, a beta version of Dalit, or a very uh, beta version at least, maybe a Delta version or something, uh, because it's not quite finished, but we just want to give you an idea of, of what it is and what it can do and 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 what we hope it can can do in the future as well. So the question was how to analyze these 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 great wealth of sources we found over the past a couple of years. As I've said on the first day, we first had one body of notes for Greek, but now we have 13 for all three languages, uh, so it's 13 in total, and each language is represented. And, and so how could we make this accessible to scholars in a convenient way was an important question uh, for us so that everybody can judge for themselves uh, to what extent the trilingue was innovative as is often claimed or perhaps remarkably uninnovative i don't know so um and at first we started in words or at least xander started in words but but yeah, it soon turned out that it didn't make sense. So, so uh, we we decided to to uh, look at other options and and uh, looked at the relational database uh, as a format to to uh, yeah, process our student notes and to edit them. And we could crucially draw on on the expertise present at the Faculty of Arts uh, in the Tris Magistos uh, team and in other and from other projects so that's we're very grateful that we have this expertise on which we can rely and it's, it's affordable for a research project um, um, and turning to Dalit of which you see uh, uh, the, the beta beta version of the delta version before you uh, what does it offer we hope it offers a new and dynamic way for publishing student notes included in 16th century prints uh, apply, and this is applied to three core uh, trilingual sources so one for each language taught and we hope that this is this way of editing offers more metadata than uh, ABO offers. Uh, so metadata that are specifically uh, tailored to studying student notes, to investigate them and, 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 and analyze them in, in a very detailed uh, way. Uh, the URL will be uh, www.dalet.be. So uh, that's very uh, easy but hold your horses and it's not up and running uh, yet that, that will be something for one of the days to come or the weeks to come perhaps um so we'll keep you posted about that when it's officially online we're now uh, just running a, a test version from local servers um but uh, before I, I pass the floor to to uh, uh, more important people i will give you some numbers so we have currently three core sources from three students uh, and taken in three different courses on the three so-called sacred languages taught by three different professors. So three is the central uh, number, uh, as you can see. Um, all the notes stem, stem from the 1540s, um, which suggests there might be some historical bias, or was it perhaps the, the Ahmed, the flourishing period of Trilingue, we don't know. And we have thus far uh, entered into our database 4,182 annotations. Um, and not to mention the, the countless hours spent in the labyrinth of the database where uh, Xander found his calm during this uh, pandemic, as he will uh, enthusiastically show uh, now. Yeah, thank you, Raf. Uh, um, so this is the homepage at the moment uh, with the three core texts uh, uh, Raf just mentioned. Uh, indeed, all the notes stem from the 1540s, so the years you see here in the right-hand side uh, are, are the, the dates of the editions. And so the, the Homer was taught in 1543, Virgil uh, coincidentally in the same year, 1549, and uh, Hebrew lectures, 1547. Um, there is, an, just very quickly, uh, an about page, of course, and uh, what is Dalit? Um, uh, some 
short information about uh, the corpora, um, edition principles, um, glossary, etc., and also uh, primary and secondary references. And there is also a how to cite page. But the most interesting part, of course, uh, lies within uh, these three uh, tabs, so to speak. So if we go to Virgil, um, first you will see what I call the skeletal structure, uh, skeletal structure of, of, of the, the entire book, which uh, Natasha is, is, is a quarto, of course, not an octavo, sorry for that. Um, uh, and as you can see, every volume uh, has its own uh, record. Also, the interfoliated pages have their own tile. But if you click on them, you will see that there are no notes uh, that you will see here. Uh, why is this? Because the notes on the interfoliated, on the interleaved pages, of course, reference uh, printed texts. So these annotations have been entered in the um, in the relevant uh, records, uh, which you also find here uh, in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the text information uh, part of the database. Um, now let's take a quick look at the, let's say the, the beginning of the 12th book of uh, Virgil's Aeneid. So this is how it looks at the moment. Um, so, uh, also, the the looks and the aesthetic of the site is, of course, uh, not 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 finished. It it, it will look um, more clean uh, and more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so, for example, first, if I click on maximize text area, then all the verses are uh, nicely put. Um, but the the interesting part is, of course, if you hover over one of the words in bold. Then there uh, appears here uh, the record containing all the information uh, on that specific note, and, and and again this will this will look much more nicely in the finished product. So now we have to scroll a lot, and everything seems a bit weird. So please take that into account. This this is not how it will look uh, in a few months' time. Um, also. Uh, let's let's have a look at another note because uh, often if you if you if you look at the originals, it often happens that uh, one word in Virgil has one, two, three, four uh, notes appended to it, and it's very hard to to visualize this. So we work with um, related annotations. So for example, the Poignorum has both uh, annotation idea 170 and related to this is 171. And then you can click on it and you can compare the two notes and see what they have in common. Uh, um, so, so this contains the, the literal transcription, my uh, translation, and then all kinds of, of metadata, the, the kinds and the types, which I discussed in my uh, talk. Um, if you click on tabular view, then you see all the, the annotations uh, uh, to one specific volume. Uh, just let me have a quick look at my notes if I'm seeing everything here. Um, yeah, um, at the moment, it's, 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 it's not yet uh, finished, but you will be able to search for everything you want in the database. Um, so you will be able to both generate uh, qualitative and quantitative, quantitative data. So if, for example, you are interested for some reason to know uh, how many interlinear nodes there are, then you will be able to see in the entire purpose how many interlinear nodes there are. If you, for example, want to know how many times is Hobo mentioned or how many times was Nami's site Pliny, then you will be able to um, to, to look all of that up. Um, and let's have a, a quick look at uh, Homer uh, about uh, which uh, edition Raff will tell you more in, 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 in his paper. Um, this is the beginning of the first book of the Odyssey. And it's the same story, essentially. Uh, this is a, com a complete um, copy of the 1535 edition because we need that as a basis. Uh, and then every word that has annotation is tagged. For example, the Tarsos, this is actually interesting uh, because it is both 
interlinear if you look at the original that can you can do that here right. so here it reads tarsos the audakia part here is interlinear but the um, explanation continues marginally and coincidentally uh, that note is also if i'm not mistaken uh, has a double kind yeah it's both a translation and it's also a clarification uh, so just one more time it's the same story with, with virgil if you want to compare something uh, excuse me if you want to compare something you just click on images and then it pops up the page that you are seeing so if you are not agreeing with my edition you can check for yourself um, and I think that's the most important thing I had to say. Uh, and now I pass the mic to Maxime. Thank you, Sander. So yeah, you can uh, click on uh, the Psalterium Hebraicum uh, page. First uh, folio, yeah. There you can see that, uh, well, you would expect uh, a nice Hebrew text, uh, but instead you see uh, a transliteration, a transliteration, um, Taken from the uh, database uh, database Shebang Shebang. Um, well, uh, why did uh, we opt for this? Uh, because well, the computer, the database couldn't stomach uh, the Hebrew text, which, as you may know, runs from right to left. So this posed a lot of problems for uh, implementing the annotations. Uh, so we took uh, this um, somewhat clumsy um, but exact uh, transliteration. Uh, if you uh, Hoover on uh, the second word, Ha'ish, yes. Um, yes, you can see uh, the same uh, system. Uh, there is also a related annotation uh, next to it. Um, but this uh, will not uh, last forever. I mean, there will be also um, a true Hebrew text with Hebrew letters attached to it later on, uh, adjusted to the page of the original uh, Hebrew Psalter from 1532. Another problem we uh, encountered in uh, implementing the annotations uh, of the Hebrew Psalter, uh, well, it's uh, something I will talk later uh, in my, uh, my upcoming talk uh, more about, uh, is the uh, presence of Hebrew accents. Accents uh, placed by the, written by the students uh, in, the, uh, in the Psalter. Uh, we didn't find uh, a way to implement uh, these, but that will uh, also uh, be done in due time. Um, that's it for uh, the Hebrew parts. Well, to conclude, uh, we can say that working on a database raised a lot of questions, both method methodological and analytical. So, before, uh, of course, um, one uh, of those uh, questions has already been uh, raised uh, by Xander, namely the typology, the double typology of, uh, well, what is the type uh, of the annotation of the kinds or the kinds? Um, is it, well, there are multiple uh, uh, options uh, as Xander already has explained. So this is uh, already uh, an open question. So we are curious to, uh, to hear your uh, thoughts on this and uh, on the website in general, of course, uh, stressing that it is still a beta version. So there will be much work uh, done in the, in the following months. Our plans for the future with this database, um, so to say, are in uh, fine-tuning the, the digital edition to make it more user-friendly, um, and also to uh, fill in the bibliographic and prosopographic data, like books and persons uh, related to the trilingual classroom. And as Xander already mentioned, a more attractive house style. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>